Hi, welcome to this episode of Grad Student Tips. I'm Lee Hall, PhD. You can email me, liehall39 at gmail.com if you have questions you'd like to see me address in future episodes. And also check out my blog, liehall.wordpress.com, where I talk about issues of teaching and learning in higher education. Now, today we're going to be talking about deciding authorship roles. And in the last video, we talked about um, why you might want to consider publishing with multiple people. And I shared with you some of the big steps that you need to think through in order to make sure that that goes successful. Uh, so what we're going to look at today is what does it mean to be first author, second author, etc., and why do you want to decide this stuff up front? Now, what I've made the assumption here, I've made an assumption here, and it is that you are going to be first author, all right? And the first author, of course, is the person that has the idea. And in the last video, which I will link to in the show notes, I talked about how it doesn't have to be a research project. So I'm not really coming, when we're talking about this right now, I'm not really coming at this from a research project perspective, um, but more like if you want to do a literature review or an essay, that sort of thing, we'll get into talking about research projects and authorship roles in future videos because those can be a little more nuanced. But let's say you had the idea, you're the first author. As first author, you're typically going to be doing the bulk of the, you are going to be doing the bulk of the work. You're going to be doing at least 50% of the original writing. So you'll negotiate with your other authors what all they'll be doing, but you're going to do the bulk of the original writing and you're going to be, as people are finishing their work and sending it to you, you're going to be um, giving them feedback because they're going to have to make revisions. So you're going to have to read what they wrote, um, tell them what they need to do to make it better, send it back to them, set new deadlines, and manage all that. And then as the work is coming in, you're going to have to unify your piece and make it cohesive. So you're doing your own writing. You're editing and revising your own writing. You've assigned roles for other people, right? They know what they're writing. They know when it's due. And then they're sending it to you to get feedback. Um, you're reading it, giving them feedback, setting new deadlines, and managing all of that. And then if people don't, of course, uh, meet their deadlines, then you have to stay on top of that and figure out what you're going to do. Now, second author, and I didn't go past second author because the workload will typically decrease after second author, but second author is going to do 30 to 50% of the original writing, and they may be asked to give some feedback. Again, you can negotiate this with the second author. You know, it's really going to depend on your relationship with that person, but the way that I often do it is second author, you know, we decide what the second author is going to write. Um, that person gets it done. I, you know, read it, give feedback, etc. And then when I'm making the, working to unify the piece and make it cohesive, when I've got it, everything pretty well set to the point that it looks like it's almost done, then you shall ask the second author to give some feedback, okay? So this is the case if there's three, four, or five authors. When the piece looks pretty good, I'm sure it's not totally dumb, but it's looking pretty stable, then I, I usually expect the second author to give some feedback because that's the benefit of having another person is having their eyes on it. Now, with third, fourth, et cetera, authors, I don't usually ask them to give feedback. What I typically do is once the first, once myself and the second author have agreed that, hey, this piece looks really good, we think it's pretty done, we're ready to submit it, what we'll typically do is send it out to the rest of the group and say, if you happen to have time, please take a look at this, give us any feedback, um, and here's the date when we need that feedback by, all right? And... That's if they don't give it, that's fine. It's not necessary, but it is a you know, we do it as a courtesy so people can see what it looks like. Um, if they have some ideas of things that need to be fixed, we definitely want to hear them. They can catch us, people will catch things that we didn't see, and you know, we want to also make sure that everybody's okay with their name going out on it. All right, do you like how you've been represented here? Because even when right, the third author, the fourth author, the second author sends me their work. Um, at some point when I'm working to make it cohesive, I will be changing some of the language around or I might be cutting some things out and they may not be happy with that. Um, that doesn't mean I'm going to do it the way they like, but they should see it and be able to respond to it and I should be able to consider it. So that's it. You want to decide all the rules up front. It's a protection for you. It's a protection for everybody else. Um, it should minimize any kind of you know in-house fighting. Everything's been very clear, um, clearly laid out, and everybody should know exactly what they want to do, and this should make your piece run smoothly.